Hello everyone and welcome to Crop House Creators. My name is Amy and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a puppet using recycled materials that you'd find around the house. Now at the National Coal Mining Museum this year we have a new exhibition called the Illumination Gallery which tells the story of how these were invented. The flame safety lamp. Granted, this is only a drawing of one. You need to come to the museum yourself in order to see one of these for real. Now, before the flame safety lamps were invented, uh, miners working underground would have taken a candle in order to see. Now, little did they know that there were dangerous gases underground, such as a gas called methane that reacts to fire and can cause explosions. Um, this caused lots of explosions underground and resulted, unfortunately, in lots of miners dying. Now, this was certainly a problem in coal mining, a problem that needed to be solved. Now, in 1815, the Sunderland Society sent a letter to Sir Humphrey Davy asking for his help with this. Now, they knew Sir Humphrey Davy was a keen scientist and was excellent at problem solving. He agreed to help invent a device that could create light underground without reacting with the gas methane meaning no explosions. Now, I don't want to give too much away because you can find out all about the story of the flame safety lamp in our new illumination gallery and you can work with Sir Humphrey Davy to solve the problem for yourselves. Now, in tribute to Sir Humphrey Davy, uh, I have created a puppet of him today, which I'll be showing you how to make. Um, so let's get started. This is a picture of what Sir Humphrey Davy looks like and I'm going to use this as a reference for when I'm making my puppet. Hello, my name is Sir Humphrey Davy and I'm a famous scientist, don't you know? In this video, you'll learn how to make a mini me. Let's get started. Making the body. I want to cut a piece of paper the same size as a toilet tube so I've got a nice blank canvas to work on. Now I'm going to measure the height of the toilet roll tube. I like to measure in millimetres and there are 10 millimetres in every centimetre. So this toilet roll tube, the height of it is 104 millimetres and I'm now going to transfer this onto a piece of white paper. So I'm going to do 104 millimetres at one side of the paper to measure the height of the toilet roll tube and I'm going to repeat that so 104 millimetres again at the other side and then like a game of dot to dot I can join these up together so I've got the same height of the toilet tube all the way across there and I'm now going to cut this out. I now want to work out the circumference of the toilet roll tube, which is the measurement of the outside of a circle. So I'm wrapping my piece of paper around and I'm just looking at where the paper ends on the other side and then I'm going to mark these two points up. Do the same thing as before and join these two dots up, ready to cut along that line. The proof of the pudding is in the testing and I'm really happy. This fits nice and snugly. So I'm now going to start drawing out my design of the body of Sir Humphrey Davy. Now Davy was very dapper and he wore something called a cravat, which was almost like a white scarf around his neck. He also wore tailored clothes. So he had things uh, like a waistcoat, which I'm doing with a collar here with three round buttons. And he also used to wear an over jacket so I'm going to draw that detail on as well, just so I've got the character of Sir Humphrey Davy there. I'm also going to draw him a nice little pocket so he can store all his little things that he uses in his scientific experiments. And now I'm ready to colour this in. I'm using these wax crayons and I don't like the colouring to look really flat. So I'm using two different shades of red here for his waistcoat to create a nice depth. So I'm starting with the lightest of the two colours 
and I'm going to just give a nice wash of this all over his waistcoat and then once I've finished that I'm going to go around the edges with this darker red crayon just to get some tones and some shadows in there to make it look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to be giving Davy these glorious gold buttons and I'm going to do his over jacket is sort of a greeny bluey colour. Now they do say red and green should never be seen but only on special occasions however Davy would have wanted to stand out in the crowd and to be honest when he wore things like this it was a special occasion of him showcasing his famous inventions. So I'm now I'm ready to glue this in place on my toilet tube and then the body will be finished. And it's done, ready for the next stage. Making the head. I'm using this scrap of recycled cardboard, which was actually an insert for some Easter egg packaging. Now I want to create a curve for the head, so I'm going to just use the inside of a sellotape um, roll here. So you can see I'm squeezing it in to create the curve that I want. And then I'm doing this on both sides to create shape for Sir Humphrey Davy's head and I'm just going to cut it out I'm happy with the size of this it's always better to cut it bigger because you can always trim some off but you can't add it on now I want the hair to look 3d so I'm just lining this up with the rest of the card and I'm there going to just mark where I want the hair to start I'm going to make it bigger at the top of his head because he had quite flamboyant hair I'm also now just going to add some little details in just to make the hair look more realistic. Adding some lines in to show the direction of his hair and now I'm going to cut this out. So I'm just going to glue this in place and then I can draw on his facial features and then colour him in. A little tip when you draw in the eyes on is that actually the proportions of somebody's face if you were to measure their head and measure halfway down that's where their eyes start so if you want to make your drawing look really really realistic then that's a good method to try now Davy had a lot of character and I want to do him with this quite smug face because he was very very confident and he was very very proud of himself for coming up with all these amazing inventions and um, so I'm quite happy with how he looks um, he definitely looks quite confident and I'm just going to colour his face in now using my wax crayons um, and then I'll be able to attach the face onto the body. I'm going to position the head so his uh, chin is nicely nuzzled into that white cravat. I'm going to make sure I put a decent amount of glue on the head itself and some on the body and then I'm going to pop it in place. On to the next stage, making the hands and feet. I'm using some recycled card to create some templates of the hands and feet. Now the reason why I'm doing templates is because it means that I can alter the drawing. I don't have to be too precious about making a mistake. So you can see here that I'm reshaping the fingers. I'm also going to create a nice boot for Davy. He wore quite um, shiny leather boots uh, with a bit of a heel. So I'm going to get that in there as well. And once I've cut these out, I can draw around them and I don't have to worry about making mistakes. And that's the beauty of using a template. I'm 
I'm going to be using wool for the arms and legs and I want to do a front and back of the hands and feet because you can see if I turn the hand over you can still see the wool which doesn't look very professional. So instead of doing two hands and two feet I'm going to do four hands and four feet so they've got a front and a back. Now to be able to do this I need to do two of the hands in one direction and two of the hands in the other direction. Now they've all got the same shape around the outline, I'm just adding in the different details of the fingers and I'm going to add in some different cuffs as well in there just to add extra detail. I'm then going to get a finer tip pen to add details such as fingernails and the creases of the fingers as well. So the top two hands, I'm going to do a front and a back there. And then the bottom two hands, I'm doing a front and a back also. And that should work out when you come to gluing these together so they match up correctly. I'm now going to colour these in using a skin tone colour. And then I'm going to cut these out. So the hands are complete now, I'm just going to match them together just to make sure that I've got the front and the back there. So I'm repeating the same process with Davy's boots here and I'm going to use something called tessellation which is where you rotate the objects so they fit tightly together. This is just so I can use the smaller scraps of card. I'm then going to cut them out and then colour these in using the black pen that I'm using to draw around with. Again, I'm just making sure that I've got two boots facing one way and two boots facing the other way so that they stick back to back over the wall. So I'm happy with these. The hands and feet are a really nice proportion compared to the body and head. And I'm ready for the next stage. Attaching the legs and arms. I'm now going to cut the wool for the arms and legs. Now I want the arms and legs to be the same length as the body. So I know the body is 104 millimetres, but I need to allow a little bit of excess to tie a knot in the end of the wool. So I'm actually going to allow myself an extra 10 millimetres and cut each length 114 millimetres. I want the arms and legs to go at the side of the toilet tube and I'm going to roughly mark these out about 10mm down from the top of the toilet roll for the arms and then I'm getting a sharp pencil and a bit of foam to create the holes there. You can do this with a pin and a needle or again a sharp pencil and some blue tack just to protect your fingers. I'm then going to tie a knot in the end of the wall and then pull on the arm and then it's secure in place. I'm going to repeat this process for both of the arms and both of the legs as well. When I mark out the legs I want these roughly in line with the arms and again I'm going to roughly do them about 10 millimeters from the bottom of the toilet roll tube and repeat the same process of creating the holes, 
pushing the wool through and tying a knot to secure them in place. As you can see, this one I'm struggling with. I'm just trying to be patient and resilient and eventually I will succeed. I'm now going to glue on the hands and feet. I'm going to put the glue on the cardboard itself and not onto the wool, otherwise the wool will transfer onto the glue stick and will make it all fluffy, which I don't want. I'm roughly putting about 10 millimetres of wool onto the cardboard so it's sandwiched in to make it nice and secure. I'm now going to repeat the same process for the boots. So about 10 millimetres of wool I'm going to sandwich in between each boot, so the front and back, to make it nice and secure. Once I've done this, I'm on to the next stage. Making the puppet controller. For the puppet controller frame, I'm going to use two kebab skewers and I'm going to measure the length of each skewer, which should be the same. So here it's 236 millimetres. I'm going to divide that in two to find the centre point, which should be 118 millimetres. I'm going to repeat this so I've got the centre point for both pieces. The reason why we're measuring millimetres is because it's more accurate. So I now need to attach these together. I'm going to use some cellar tape just initially, just to get them in place where I want them. So just a couple of pieces, just roughly in place. Now this is an extra measure that I'm adding to make it more secure and to get the two pieces in place. Now I've got about 300 millimetres of wool here that I'm wrapping around in different directions and I'm doing this so I can manipulate the wooden frame to make it so it's got four 90 degree angles. I've then left myself two ends of wool which I'm tying together in a double knot. I'm going to do this in both directions and that will make the frame nice and secure and I don't have to worry about it coming undone. I'm now going to cut the string for the head, hands and feet of my puppet. I'm going to cut 300 millimetres for the head and I'm going to cut 600 millimetres, so two times 300 millimetres for the hands and feet. I'm now ready to tie these in place. I've made sure to do excess of all of the pieces of string. I have done this because this is a very time consuming part of making a puppet and I don't want to come to attach the head, arms and legs and realise I don't have enough string and I can always, if I've got too much excess, trim it off at the end. I am tying these roughly 20 millimetres away from the end of the skewer. I have tried to tie mine really tightly in place, however if yours are a little bit loose you can always add a little bit of glue stick just to secure them down. I am now ready for the next stage. Stringing the puppet. I'm now going to use a sharp pencil and some foam to create some holes in Sir Humphrey Davies hands and feet. This is so the string can thread through to move his arms and legs. I'm doing the holes in his thumbs and at the top of the boots. I'm 
attaching my puppet controller onto a wooden frame is it's really difficult to do this part on your own. If you have got someone there at home to help you, it's good to get them to hold the puppet controller frame for you. This is so the strings don't get tangled up. I'm now measuring the string for the head. I'm measuring 30 millimetres. And now I've measured up, I'm going to use some sellotape to attach the string to the back of the head. I'm now ready to attach the hands and feet. So the V-shape of the frame at the front, I'm going to use to attach to the hands. This can be quite fiddly. So just try and be patient with it because this is the last part and then your puppet will be complete. I'm going to do this by eye because it's really difficult to measure these pieces of string. So I'm making sure the string is tight but not so tight that Sir Humphrey Davies arm is lifted up by the string. So you can see here the string isn't baggy but it isn't so tight that it's making the arm lift up either. I'm going to repeat exactly the same process on Sir Humphrey Davies' other arm. I'm double knotting these as well. Little trick is, once you've done the first knot, you can always just alter it like I'm doing there and then secure it fully with the second knot. The arms are done, let's start on the legs. Threading these fine pieces of cotton through is almost like threading a needle. So you might need to push the pencil or pin through again. Doing exactly the same thing as the arm, so making sure that the string is tight, but not so tight that it will lift up Sir Humphrey Davies' legs. I'm just finishing up the last leg now. Once I have done this, I'm going to just test the legs again, just to make sure that I'm happy with them. Once you're happy with the legs and arms and the length of all the pieces of string, you can then trim the excess. And my Sir Humphrey Davy puppet is done. Time to test him out. Hello again. I hope you've managed to make a mini me, Sir Humphrey Davy. I hope your puppet has got as smooth moves as I have. Although I'm about to do a lecture and I'm missing something. Puppet accessories. Now, no Sir Humphrey Davy puppet is complete without an accessory of the Davy flame safety lamp. Davy discovered that using a wire gauze with lots of tiny holes in it could be the key to solving the problem of explosions underground. Now, if you come and visit the National Coal Mining Museum's new illumination gallery, you can find out why this was such a remarkable discovery. I'm now going to cut this out and decorate the other side so it's double-sided to add that extra detail, and then I'm ready to glue this on to Sir Humphrey Davy's hand. This means that Sir Humphrey Davy will be ready to showcase his new invention at one of his famous lectures. And there we have it. It's finished. Well, I do hope to see you at the National Coal Miner Museum's Illumination Gallery, where you can work with me to help me solve my problem of how to prevent explosions from happening underground. I look forward to seeing you soon. Toodle pip! Thank you ever so much for tuning into Cap House Creators today. I hope you enjoy getting creative, making your own puppet at home. I certainly enjoy doing this today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to be posting some uh, links below which are of further interest. Uh, we've also got lots of things going on on our Facebook page, our Twitter and Instagram. So keep tuned into those pages to see what's going on with our museum. Lots of interesting things there. And we've also got lots and lots of resources on our website as well. Um, so have a look at those if you want to find out more. 
Thank you ever so much. See you soon, everyone. Bye.